Admiral's Log. As preparations for the audacious operation continue to unfold, I have made the decision to embark on a grand rehearsal, a large-scale demonstration of our naval might and strategic prowess. Our objective, to take control of all Russian ports in the Asian theater, securing the region and making it safer for Chinese commerce. With the Russian Empire weakened by internal strife and external pressures, the time is ripe for us to assert our control in the region, to establish ourselves as the undisputed masters of the Pacific. By removing Russian presence in the Asian ports, we not only strengthen our own position, but also remove a potential threat to our ambitions in the future. Already our warships are mobilizing, their hulls resounding with the steady beat of preparation and anticipation. From the mightiest battleship to the humblest patrol boat, each vessel bears the mark of our determination, a testament to our unwavering resolve. But make no mistake, this will be no easy task. The Russian Empire may be weakened, but it is not defeated, and their ports are sure to be heavily defended. Yet I am undeterred, for I know that with careful planning and unwavering determination, we can achieve the impossible. Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to episode 14. This episode, we're going to start poking some nations around us. Not necessarily Japan, because I don't consider Japan a threat at all, but we have a northern neighbor. Now, I am still planning on invading the US, but I have found a target of opportunity in the form of the Russian Empire. Here's why. The Russians have, well, they have a decent army force, but their army logistics is quite bad. I was suffering from this myself in the previous campaign. My army logistics is 100%. Now, I am capable, of course, of invading some of these territories, like the, the Russian Far East and Northern Siberia. This is utterly uninteresting, because 50 million, like, it's a drop in a bucket, you won't even notice. This one, this, meh. Um, I'm expecting to go for the Russian Far East and North Sakhalin, as well as take Kamchatka. Because with having a bit of territory here, I suspect that my army is going to walk right into Siberian Russia potentially from Mongolia, Xinjiang might launch a little expedition into Kazakhstan, things like that, you know, things to keep the army busy. Off screen, I've already been working up to this, so my tension with these guys is 98. We're going to increase the tension a little bit more and wait for the flash in the pan. And well, 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 Russia has sent us an ultimatum demanding that we withdraw the fleet. What fleet? Absolute disgrace. Oops, Russia and China are now at war. Oh dear, whatever shall we do? Well, we're going to mobilize the fleet, that's what. Um, the fleet's going to go after something... Well, actually, I suspect that the group over here in South Sakhalin might just take North Sakhalin all by itself. I'm not sure if this is considered a connected landmass, but let's take Kamchatka. There's only 16,000 men, at least for now. Now, at this point, I have a very sizable navy and a ludicrous amount of money. I am getting 500 million a month. And that is pretty much with most sliders maxed out. 460 million with everything maxed out. Uh, we're going to have to start cranking out a lot more ships. My economy has been growing like crazy. And I'm almost starting to think that my economy is stuck. Stuck in growth. Which is a really weird but pleasant problem to have. Because most of the time, your economy, well, it tends to bob up and down a bit. Uh, sometimes you get a, a, a nice surplus, sometimes you get a bit of a, a downside. But my economy has been stuck on 10.7% per year, like clockwork. And with that, I'm now in possession of a 940,000 ton navy. That's not even my final form. Because you see, I'm building a whole bunch more of the Mecha Medic class of uh, heavy cruiser. I expect these to start being able to go to the US in about six months. Three months till the first flight and six months until the next flight. And if you look at the massive line of Mecha Medic ships that I have, well, 
I should have quite a while ready soon. Indonesia, in the meanwhile, is preparing not to get retaken by the Dutch, and they've been buying a couple of battleships, which I'm happily producing for them. Now, as for the Russian Navy, I didn't even care to look what we're facing. They have 18 heavy cruisers, 18 lights, and 5 battleships and a battle cruiser. The real question is, are they even here? And the answer appears to be very much, no, they're not. So if they're not over in their Asian, Asian uh, theater, they must be over here. Yeah, where are you going? <laughs> the Adriatic. Okay, fine. Heavy cruiser there. They probably got their fleet over here. Yeah, there's a light. Over here we have a heavy cruiser again. I'm not really sure where the Russian fleet is at. They, they seem to be patrolling with single ships. That's fine. Now, another benefit of completely wiping out any Russian presence over here is that I can freely operate here without having to worry about any transport ships getting knocked down. So, let me assemble some navies, and I shall be right back with you. And, just as I was hoping for, the Chinese Empire initiates a major offensive against Manchuria. Or, sorry, from Manchuria against the Russian Far East, and from Tajikistan against Uzbekistan. Um, to make matters worse for the Russians, they have, um, well, they have some more issues. Both Germany and Japan, well, for what it's worth, just declared war on Russia. So Russia is now facing several wars at the same time. Oh, they were already fighting the Austro-Hungarians, I guess. So they're going to be a little bit in trouble. And as you look at their economy, it's 124 billion. I got 121 billion on the Spanish. 286 billion on the Sri Hungary, 60 billion on Japan. This is just cute. Not sure exactly how, with 60 billion, they're still able to afford this much for their navy. But hey, um, the game works in mysterious ways. Now, I already have my fleet over here in Petropavlovsk, so all I need to do now is launch the naval invasion of Kamchatka, which only requires 8,500 tons. And considering what I have there, well, that should be working out quite well. I'm also going to start planning future invasions, so I might be able to launch several invasions at the same time. Because I have so many ships here, I should be able to completely crush the Russian Empire and maybe even make the whole thing disintegrate. I think that would be very amusing. Um, it's not the first empire that I've done it to. Hello, Japan. And it'll probably not be the last, as I am still planning on invading the US, but... Well, this thing just kind of happened to come on my path, and I thought, well, let's go for it. I was thinking that this war was going to be one where I just did invasion after invasion after invasion. But Russia has sent forth one heavy cruiser. It's a Durban-class heavy cruiser with 10.5-inch guns and 8 of them. Beyond that, it has 14 5-inch guns. So this thing has the potential to be quite dangerous to my destroyers. These are relatively older destroyers, 1921 Tyan class and with these I have a plenty of torpedoes. The real question is, will this thing be able to outshoot me before I'm able to launch? Alright, we've been detected, and this enemy heavy cruiser has definitely, well, less than fortunate intent for my ships. As for my destroyers, I have the Bijin, the uh, Kuyun, I have the Maximus, and I have the Fotoguan. Um, these are armed with 4-inch guns. I think that's not really going to make a dent in this cruiser. These guys definitely have a lot more prospect. Ooh! Oh, oh. Ow. Um, did you just knock out all my 4-inch guns? Y yeah, you did. You knocked out one of them and I took all of the ammunition with it. Well, that's nice. Uh, let's torpedo then quickly. While well, we still have some health left. And I don't think that I'm going to strictly win the fight. If something like this persists, let's have you guys also engage. Maybe not with the last destroyer, but, well... Needs must. Um, gentlemen, smoke up. Dump your torps in the water. You still have a... There you go. Now run. Run for your buoyancy. I really hope this heavy cruiser isn't turning to engage me. Sometimes these ships make absolutely no sense in what they're going to do. 
Also, this thing is probably going way too fast. No, it's actually doing 30 knots. Sometimes you have ships doing far more speed than they're actually supposed to be able to do. Okay, we have something that resembles a cross torp going on. Let's see, five and a half clicks out, can we pen that? One inch of armor. I don't think so. Over pen on the BGN. I think this is destroyer's toast. Now remember, heavy cruisers in this mod have no capability of detecting torpedoes. But that, of course, doesn't preclude this heavy cruiser from just maneuvering. <clears throat> they don't have to be aware of the torpedo. If they are, happen to be maneuvering, they'll just dodge. Which seems to be exactly what the ship is doing. Thankfully, it is taking a bit of damage there from that one torp. Uh, but now you're going to have to run. Reloading is going to take me, what, 10 minutes? Yeah, just about. Now, how well can you sustain your flooding? you got many bulkheads. You have anti-torp 2. You have reinforced bulkhead 1 and anti-flood 2. And I only hit you right on the nose. Meaning that this ship is definitely capable of not only taking the torpedo, but surviving it. And with that, I'm probably going to have to hit him again. So, I'm going to have to keep the DDs relatively close. And see if I can torpedo this thing again. Alright, DDs have been dancing around for a bit. And now we have them reloaded. 10.3 kilometer range with 23 inch torps. But my torpedoes are not feeling that eager to launch. Oh, the Fatuka one wasn't even ready. Okay, fine. We'll dip them into one big salvo then. Um, now the challenge is keep the DDs alive for just long enough to make the torpedoes reach the target. If you maneuver too violently, the ship is going to maneuver with you. At which point, this heavy cruiser is just going to dodge. At this point, however, I think I might hit one and potentially this second one as well. Yep, there's one. Oh, well, well, well. Well, 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 not bad. Pamiat Azova. That ship is toast. They definitely did some damage. Um, one of my destroyers sunk. The other one was badly damaged, but their heavy cruiser is gone. $122 million worth of ship, and I lost one for 27. So definitely an economic victory. Victory points in this war are not something that I really am aiming for. For the simple reason that I don't think Russia has anything that I want. Yes, it has territory, but it does not have colonies. So it's not that I can just easily rack up a whole bunch of victory points and then start claiming their colonies, because A, I don't want them, and B, they don't have them. Now, the Russians are definitely in major pressure here. Uh, they're all... <laughs> they're doing their own invasions, really. Because I am invading here, I'm invading here, um, I am naval invading there, I'm prepping the next invasion here, I'm doing a land invasion here. The Germans... Are the Germans on the move? No. The Russians are on the move against Bohemia Moravia. Wow, that would be really bad news for Austria-Hungary if they lose that. I'm surprised the Germans aren't pushing in yet. Lithuania is not that heavily defended. And I suspect that the German logistics is good. Yeah, 100%. Interesting. They're not pushing yet. As for the Russian Navy, have they taken any losses? No critical losses, no. Okay, very good. As for my research, I now have access to some decent big guns, but they're only Mark III 14s, so I'm not that interested in building another battleship just yet. Uh, rangefinders, things like these, well, they're coming. Stamboscopic Rangefinder 5. I already have Quinson's Rangefinder 5. Um, this tech is then going to start giving me radar rangefinders, which would be really nice. But what I'm actually after is bigger guns. So let's say 15 inch Mark III. And then probably hull strengthening, so I can start getting a couple of modernized dreadnoughts out there. So let's prioritize this. And let's prioritize that. And see what sort of guns we can dig up for that new hull that we're about to get. A few months later, we finally have our modern battleship hull design. How modern is that? Well, <laughs> modernized dreadnought. 
It's not a modern battleship that we're getting. In the meanwhile, I have also done uh, a little bit of expansion. Conquered the area of Kamchatka, conquered southern Siberia, working on conquering North Sakhalin. They're kind of getting pinchered here. Um, we have the army pushing in from the south, but it's taking them months. So I was not eager to wait for that. I am not a patient man. So I'm pushing in here with the whole navy, or at least, well, enough navy to upset the Russians. I may have overdone the port strikes on Magadan a bit, because it has zero port capacity. I didn't even know that was a thing, but yeah, zero port capacity on a port. So, I don't know how that even looks. Is that like a a wooden dock that got shot to shit? Is that what we're looking at? Anyway, the invasion here, going quite well. Um, I imagine that it would work quite well if you're walking with five and a half million men. The invasion over here, not doing as well. But we're still making a bit of progress. I'm kind of waiting for the Russian collapse. Um, they're still decreasing by about 9.5% per year. And their naval funding seems to be going towards trying to crank out ships at a very, very slow rate, um, as well as repairing whatever the hell they have left. Now, for some interesting reason, Japan is provoking me. So tensions are at minus 90 or 90 points with Japan. Um, if they want to be my next speed bump, um, that's fine. They don't have that many territories left and I'd be eager to pay them a visit as soon as I'm done with the Russians. For now though, let's design a new ship. Here we go. Now we're talking. Modernized Dreadnought with a displacement of 87,000 tons. I didn't even know they went up that far, but yeah, let's do it. Uh, money is... Uh, <laughs> this is going to be expensive. Now, interestingly, <laughs> this gave me a good chuckle when I had a look at it. Um, one of my, I believe it's a member, YouTube member called State Belt, wanted to be the biggest and best battleship that I have built yet. Um, little known to him, I am planning to invade the States. So, yeah, I suppose that State Belt is, um, is kind of appropriate. This thing is probably not going to have a whole lot of ships in its flight. Because it is ludicrously expensive. 500 million and that is without all the fancy tech aboard. Let's make sure that this thing does a little bit more than 16 knots. I mean, they don't have to be quick, but 22 knots is kind of the least that I'm willing to accept. It's still really slow. Turn up the speed, um, get the armor installed. I'm still only on Krupp 2. Feels a little old, considering I'm in 1926 by now. Oh, we got Citadel 5. Nice, the all or nothing armor scheme. Coincidence range finding? No. I'm going to go for stereoscopic because this thing is probably going to stay at range. And we're going to go with RDF because I want to have that high communications range bonus. In case my fleet decides to disband or, well, let's say spread out. This is going to make sure that the, the battleship, the flagship, maintains its communications range with the rest of the fleet. As for the funnels, uh, looks quite a lot like a German Uber funnel here. The game is giving me a hard time about fitting this in. Okay, I guess it's a mega funnel. Uh, they don't want to fit there, though. 110 versus 80. 100% engine efficiency is not spectacular, but I can make it work. The ship is not that likely to go this close to the shore, though. It's 19,000. 19, I give it balanced boilers. I can ramp it up to 21. If I add another funnel, 280,000, around 26,000 kilometers. That's a bit more useful when I'm actually going to the States to stay there. As for the guns, um, I got about 30,000 tons of displacement left, which for guns is very, very nice. Let's see if this will fit. 15 inch triple barrel. I had somebody ask me recently in a comment, hey, why do you hate the quadruples? Um, I just don't really like the look of them. Yes, they can get a bit more range. Yes, they put out more shells. I just don't really like the look of them. Except on the French ships. I think on the French ships they look good. But on these ships, not really. Okay, let's put a couple more guns on. I might just go for nine barrels. So that I can still expand these into bigger guns. If I can turn them into 16 inch guns, Mark III, that'd be great. But we're still a little bit ways ahead from that. 
Increase their reloads, increase their turret rotation speed, uh, and give them something that doesn't explode in your face. Would be much appreciated. We have still a 19% flash fire. 9.5% flash fire. Is that cordite? That is cordite. As for the pen capability of these ships, let's see what we're getting. Uh, armor quality minus 140%. So I should be setting this to 140%. This is going to assume that I'm facing a peer, meaning somebody who has my level of tech. Now with this, I can pen, let's say, 15,000 meters out. I can pen 15 inches of armor. That's pretty good, I think. I would like it to be a little more. 15, yeah, 17.2 inches of armor. If I then increase the barrel length by, let's say, 10%, I can give the shells even more punch, giving me 19 inches of armor pen. And we'll have to move the turret just a slight bit. How's my armor? Oh, pretty good. Set so about 18. Uh, I got a pretty, pretty hefty citadel here. If only you could actually capitalize on this space here. Like, is this for a secondary or what? You can't even put a secondary on there. Why am I looking at this then? Oh, wow. You can put a two-incher on there. Yeah, no, that's pretty awful. Is it optional to go for a different tower? Uh, this is 17 and a half base accuracy. Sorry, 17, 15 base accuracy versus 12. 11 and a half. And this is modern secondary tower 3 enhanced. The other one still has the same form factor. This one is slightly better. Hmm. Okay, fine. I guess we'll have to live with it. Now, these things do have casemates, but they're very heavy. An 8-inch casemate costs you 264 tons. An 8-inch, let's say, single barrel is 246. However, I think you can armor these up more. So that is very valuable. I'm going to go for a bit of a mix. So we're going to have a couple of 8s. Let's say every second gun is an 8. I know I'm overweight with the ship, but that's fine. And the other ones are going to be 5s. This way I should be able to engage destroyers and heavy cruisers alike. And especially if I make the 8-inch barrels a bit longer and the 10 inch, sorry, the 5-inch barrels a bit longer, I should be able to get quite enough pen, especially with the 8s. To deal a substantial amount of damage. Let's say 10 kilometers out, I can pen 5 inches of armor. If they get closer, which I really do not want them to do, I can pen 7 inches. I should also be able to do something like that with the HE variants of this ship. Yeah, I can pen about 7 inches at 12.5 kilometers with HE. But that would mean that the rest of their battleships are dead. Which isn't terribly unlikely. It's just something that I'm not sure will strictly happen every single time. Um, yeah, I'm still slightly heavy with this ship. I'm not really sure where to save a whole lot of weight. Give her 5 inch on the belts. Mm, I would like to increase the main deck strength. That's going to come at the expense of something else. Maybe I'm going to have to slow this thing down to 21 knots. It's a slow ship. I like my ships quick. As I said, I'm not a patient man. Mm. Anti-Torp 1. Oof. Well, better make sure she's well escorted then. Better make sure that anything that happens to have torpedoes is not going to be able to use any of those torpedoes. Let's increase the deck strength to about 8. Maybe even more. Yeah, 8.5. There we go. Okay. So, for the low, low price of 1.8 billion, you too can have a battleship. Can I have these with natural boilers now? 228. Wow, that saved me a lot of weight. That saved me a lot of weight. So the weight was in the funnels? Funnel weight, 22% extra. Yeah, I guess. Fine, I'll give up a little bit of range. 
And if I can trade that for more armor, then sure. Sold. 20 inches of armor belt. 9.5 inch deck armor. Now we're getting somewhere. 2 inch superstructure armor. Uh, the main guns are maxed out. The casemates are maxed out. Damn. Okay, that's a bit much. Let's revert that to 9.5. We should be good. Whoops. 9.5. Yeah. There we go. 9.1 inches of armor with an 18.7 inch barbette. Should keep these ships safe. Uh, yes, they don't have any 2 inch guns or 3 inch guns, but if something gets to that range, then everything else has gone horribly wrong. So, that's the state belt class. It's going to take me, what, 31 months to build these things. Uh, and they will take up 87,000, or just shy of that, in the shipyards. So shipbuilding capacity is probably going to be a limiting factor here, because I might not be able to give this much of the shipbuilding capacity away, as I'm also building ships for other nations. I'm very interested in seeing if, let's say, Indonesia, or potentially any of my other allies, sorry about that, is going to be interested in getting something like this. That would be really interesting. Really interesting. Because if they want to have a ship like this, they're going to be paying so much money for it. I'm now minus 97 million. Watch what happens. Uh, I'm going to build two state belts. Boom. Minus 226 million. Uh, thankfully, I still have a very hefty war chest, and I can, if I want to, just reduce the tech budget a bit. And even just putting it back to 80%, I'm now saving about half of my money. So thankfully, that is a very decent way to save money. Now, in the next episode, I fully expect to have control over these territories. Uh, maybe we're going to do a speed run of Japan and completely wipe them out. And, well, after that, it's the United States. Thank you for watching. Let me know what your new design ships or what your thoughts are on the new design on the State Belt class. And I shall see you guys soon for more videos.